Atlanta. Amen. Amen. This is the best part of Atlanta. Right? All right. All right. This is the best part of Atlanta at True Worship Christian Fellowship. Amen. Amen. So good morning to all. Um, I just want to share a word with you that the Lord gave me. And you know, after on the in the parking lot, there's um there's a Jaguar out there that I rented on my way landing in because I live between New York and uh, Florida. And um, the Apostolic Lead of Kingdom Advancement Alliance and True Worship is one of our first little affiliates that me and uh, Pastor Dawkins decided that we would run together and be aligned in the kingdom of God. Not lording over each, each other, running together. Because we're in a race, amen? amen. And we want to win this race. Yes, we do. So this uh, car, when I, I got it, uh, you know, because you know you go through the... The Atlanta parking lot, those who never rented or whatever. You go into the parking lot and you go to the rental and they say, you know, there's a whole lot of cars. Just pick one. So I go and pick this car and uh, I wanted a Mini Cooper. I love a little Mini Cooper because they fast and like BMWs. But that's not what happened. I walked and I saw this little line like it was a tiger. And I said, the Lord said, that's it. And when I'd never seen a car before, got in and when I, I, I parked it, and pull up in the back, it's called F pace. So today the word is just pace. P-A-C-E. Because sometimes we think we can be on an F pace, which is a fast pace, because the car is fast, but it's bumpy. Yeah. And it's smooth. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you just gotta get on a pace. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about P-A-C-E. And this pace means a single step taken when walking or running. So you could be on a fast pace like the F pace, or you can be on a walking pace, just taking one step at a time. Yeah. And I'm asking you this morning, have you taken a step that's bring you closer to your purpose in Jesus? Amen. Have you taken that one step to do the work of the Lord? Or are the steps that we're taking focused on what we want and not what the king wants out of your life. Amen. So this morning, I'm challenging you to get in pace, get in step with what God is about to do in your life for purpose. Amen? Yes. So let's go to the scripture. And the scripture, I'm reading it in NLT, and it's Hebrews 12, verses 1, and it's 1B and 2A. And it's, it's a familiar scripture to those who uh, have been reading, and it just says, And let us run with endurance. The race God has set before us, not alone, not the pastor alone, not the first lady alone, but it says, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. It's a group. So are we running as a group at True Worship? I'm encouraging you. This is your time. This is your moment to run together, to follow the vision. They read the vision. They read the mission. But it's time to get in pace. It's time to get in step, to run together as a group. Amen? Amen? And, you know, pastor's back there, and it's time for him. I love it. He's sitting down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Because in that race, that us may mean that pastor may have to sit back on some things. Amen? So well, he's, he's probably behind me smiling. <laughs> But there's some things that now, as a leader, that we have to put down. And I'll share a little bit of why I'm sharing it this way. The other portion of the scripture says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. There's no other place. Where are your eyes? All right, all right. Where are your eyes? What are you looking at? Be careful what you're looking at. You know you got your phone. Come on. What are you looking at? It says, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Amen. So the focus now has to be, if you're going to be in this race and you're going to run at a steady pace and your eyes have to be on Jesus, it can't be on your phone, it can't be on Netflix all day. Amen. 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 It can't be on social media all day. All right. Amen. All right. All right. Instagram is not your testimony. Amen. So you're going to have to spend time with the word. Because how do you keep your eyes on Jesus? You're going to have to read this word. You're going to have to drink this word. You're going to stare at it. You're going to listen to it. You're going to download the Bible app, U version. And even if you can't read it, you're going to listen to it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how are you going to be transformed? How are you going to be changed unless you're 
receive his word because it cuts. It goes in one way and then it takes out the stuff that you don't need because there's things that we're doing and things that we're saying that we don't want to do and it slows down our pace to run the race. Yeah. I would love to do a marathon, but I got a few pounds to lose. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, God. You can do miracles at any time. Right? Amen. <laughs> You could do that. You you part of seed. You could just take some weight off. But what do you learn in the process if you Amen. just take it away? Nothing. So you got to study yourself to learn some things about yourself and say, God, I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Christ. And if you want to do that, then it's going to take a little slice. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a little part of you. The thing that you love the most is going to take it away. So you can strip you and rebuild you in the person Amen. that you're called to be. We're talking about running a race at the right pace. And you can't pay attention to what everyone else is doing. Yes. You can't look at their testimony and their blessing and be focused on that. You've got to focus on your race at your pace. There's many ways to get to the airport. You can take an Uber. You can ride a bike. You can walk. It doesn't matter when you get there. The goal is to get there. Amen. Don't focus on your time frame. Right, mm. right, Focus right. on his name, and his name is Jesus. Amen. So we're talking about a pace. Amen? Mm. Amen. So, uh, you know, the Lord, he always gives me acronyms a lot to teach with. And pace, that P means a plan. And, oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 16.3 says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. You got to put a word on everything that you're expecting in your life. If you're having issues with finances, put a word on it. All right. If you need a car, put a word on it. If you need a house, put a word on it. Put the word out and his word does not return void. Come on, you, sometimes you put your work on it instead of your word on it. Come on now. Then you pass out and you still get no benefit. So I'm saying put the word on things in Jesus' name. Yeah. The word is out. His name is Jesus, Lily of the Valley. His name is Jesus, Bright and Morning Star. His name is Jesus, King of Kings. His name is Jesus, Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, Mighty God. His name is Jesus, Prince of Peace. Put a word on it in Jesus' name. And watch him. Just allow him to do some of the work. Put the word out there and stop working so hard. Who's doing two jobs? <laughs> Who here needed it? Put your hand down with the red. You have to show yourself up. You're doing good, right? You're doing good. You just put it out. You said, put some more word on it so you can do one. Sometimes we work so hard, we have no time to spend with the Lord. So then he can't do anything for us because you're busy trying to do it yourself. We're talking about a pace to run a race. And you cannot run the race without relationship. Right. It's very nice to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Wonderful. But you got to walk out of a relationship. It's like dating somebody. We got, we got a testimony. He said he got a ring and he got a suit. But he can't do anything with her unless he found a woman. Correct? So what are we talking about? He's looking for a relationship. And what do you think Jesus is looking for? Relationship. So that's Amen. been part of his plan all along. That's right. What does the father do? He sent his son to reconnect us because he wants relationship with you. So you can't shut the relationship trying to do 16 hours a day and it's still not covering what you need. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about a pace to run a race of endurance. Amen? Amen. Amen? So the plan is to commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Give it over to him. So let him be the successor. Let, let him get the glory for everything that's going on. Amen. Not you look what I did for myself. No, 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 no. Then you missed it. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and blessing us with. Amen? Amen. We're talking about pace. Amen. Now, that A is to activate. Mm, that's, a, that's a rough word. Who here procrastinates? Don't put your hand up all at home. Mm. <laughs> Procrastination, right? Wow. All right. All right. Proverbs 13.4 NLT says, Lazy people want much but get little. Woo. But those who work hard will prosper. I ain't saying the word said it. You put your hand up. I ain't telling you to. Amen. So this pace out of getting this plan, you got to be activated. You can't just, you know, if this, this season is no longer I just come to church and get a word and leave. You just come come to here looking to do. Come here saying, is this something sweet? Is this something that I need to prepare? Don't come in late. 
Come on. And leave early. Come on. Amen. Don't come assessing. That A is not for an assessment. It's an activation we're talking about. Let me assess what's going on. Let me see if I fit. No. Jesus died for you. He died for me. Amen. But the activation plan is individual. So you're going to ask the Lord, I don't want to be lazy. I don't procrastinate. What do you want me to have? What do you want have for me to do? Amen. And do that. If it's sweet, clean the bathroom. If it's to help with community outreach. If it's to check out a pastor, check out first lady. Whatever it is, just check. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You don't think they're tired? They're good now. Mm. You don't yes. think so? I was here yesterday and I watched a man cook 200 hamburgers. And, uh, I, you know, I'm talking from my own experience because, you know, I have ministries up in New York and in Florida and sometimes as leaders, and this is going to help us all, sometimes as leaders, we don't realize when it's time to take our hand off of the plow. Amen. Sometimes the leadership role transitions from strategic planning versus just working and doing. And I was notorious for that because I love outreach and I love street ministry and I was always in Harlem and you could find me and I'm here and I'm there and I'm feeding the homeless and I'm doing all manner of things. And one day the Lord said to me, if you're running around, who's thinking? Because they're running, young people are running with me. But he said, they can run too. And I realized when, uh, in the midst of the pandemic, when the Lord transitioned me into Florida to expand our ministry into Florida as well as New York, I started looking on Facebook and those people were doing what I did. And then I started feeling all hurt. I was like, they out there on the street, they doing everything. And I'm, I'm down here strategizing. Is that what we do? Just strategize? But sometimes if there's no vision, you don't get provision. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the leaders now have to take the helm and the workers need to get on board. So I'm encouraging to be activated. And you're going to have to, you know, I'm speaking it out to pastor that there's going to be much more activity in his brain than in his hands. Amen? To so strategically plan for what is going on for the expansion. Because there's a big expansion happening here. True worship is now no longer just true worship, just we're giving out food. This, it, yesterday I saw a distribution center. Amen. 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 I saw something different. Amen. I was here. So I'm encouraging you. That P is planned. That A is activate. And that C is consistency. Don't come one day and then the next day you're not showing. Come on, snap that. Hey, have mercy. You know, the Lord gave me a word. And people do it all the time. The Lord gave me a word. And he told me that I'm supposed to help you. And you just help for that one hour, that one time. And we never see you again. That can't be. No. We're talking about pace to run a race. Right. And consistency is going to be key. And not just consistency in work. Consistency in your giving. Consistency in your sewing, consistency in smiling to those who come here that may Amen. not be like you, loving those who are not lovable. Amen. Remember, he prepares the table in the presence of your enemy. Stop trying to always have friends. <laughs> Amen. Wrong table. Y'all got tables out there. And you got to encourage the people because you don't know what befell them that put them in that situation. But therefore, the grace of God go any one of us. Amen. One illness, one sickness. I, 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 you know, I through the pandemic, I did a lot of traveling. You know, as the Holy Spirit led. Don't do stuff that you know the Lord didn't tell you to do. Amen. And I was uh, interviewing throughout Texas and Colorado and different places homelessness. I was interviewing them, those who were homeless. And I realized you got to find out what happened to people. One lady said her husband, he passed away. And down in Florida, uh, he passed away in the return of children. And uh, she didn't have any money and she didn't have a job. She was a stay at home mom. They lost the house so they couldn't pay the taxes. And she's out on the street and I'm giving her food and I'm giving her, because uh, Florida in February this past year got cold. We were giving our sleeping bags. Because they live in the woods, right? But then there's also other people I met who said, I've been out here for seven years and I don't like responsibility. Be careful. Watch who you're talking to. Because sometimes you're trying to push a, a place on a person that don't want to live. They don't want responsibility. 
So I realized some things that to be consistent, to be persistent, you got to almost ask, ask the people, what do you need? Because you're there trying to give them food and they don't want that. They just need a metro card. So ask people, just because people are homeless and, and, and may not have what you have, they still have rights. And guess what I decided? That those that are uh, living on the streets and out on the streets, this is their home and I'm a guest on it. Amen. That's the position. When I go in my house, then that's my house. But when I come on the street and you're out there, I'm a guest in your home because this is where you live. Because you know you could get jacked up if you sit on the wrong bench. Okay. No, they, they, they mark territory. But you care about them because they're your brothers and sisters in Christ. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. So you got to love them with an unconditional love. Amen. Are we consistent in loving? Because we're talking about pace to run a race. We can plan, we can activate, but if we're not consistent, you still out of, the race is still not complete. That's right. The consistency scripture is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And it says, therefore, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in, mm, hallelujah, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You don't do it for the pastor. You don't do it for the apostle. You don't do it. You do it unto the Lord. He is the reward of those who diligently seek him. You do the work as unto him, not as unto man. Suppose somebody will say hi to you. You're going to be upset. You ain't coming back no more. <laughs> I see it. Yeah. You know, can I say, say hi? I ain't see you. I have my glasses on. I'm sorry. It's like, you don't know. Right. Something else was on my mind. Yes. You're not being ignored. But if you come working up to the Lord, you don't need nobody to pat you on your back. Because you know his eyes move to and fro. You know that he sees you when you're sleeping. You know he doesn't slumber or see. You don't have to worry about that. But be consistent in the thing that he's given you to do. Be steadfast. Be a move. Amen? Amen now. So you got to plan. You got to activate. You got consistency. Right? And that E, that last thing, you got to encourage one another. Yes. Come on, encourage one another. You know how it's not easy to be a Christian in this season. But was Christ's job easy? Do you ever want ease? Or do you want to please? Please him. 1 Peter 5, 10 and verses 12 to 14 as well in NLT, it says, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. I have written and sent this short letter to you with the help of Silas, whom I commend to you as a faithful brother. And I commend... <clears throat> My brother, Cliff Dawkins, is a faithful brother. Amen? Amen. It says, my purpose in writing is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. The last time I, I spoke here was June 28th. And at that time, it's a little bit, a little less than six months, right before I preached, my son had called me here and, and he had, was in a car accident, fractured his neck. And he called me and he said, Mom, I'm just letting you know what happened. And I'm getting ready, like, I'm getting ready to grab the mic. And that was a call. I said, what are we doing here, Lord? And you know what he said? Mom, keep doing what you're called to do. I'll be fine. Amen. Amen. And I said, and I, 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 I got up here and I gave us a brief testimony. And of course, he completely is healed. Amen. No issue. Amen. No circumstance. Amen. But you know what the Lord told me? He said, if you had... Stop what you were supposed to do and not do your assignment. You're not fit for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about pace to run a race. Yes. So sometimes some things don't fall apart in your life. You can't let your kids distract you. You can't let relationship distract you. You can't let marital status distract you. You can't tell me about your bank account and what you don't have. What I'm saying is we want to be fit for the kingdom. So we got to have pace to run a race. And then how do we get that pace? By grace. His grace is sufficient.
sufficient to keep you. Yes. But we want to run a race. Yes. So I want to encourage you because uh, sometimes we don't get the encouragement that's needed for the race. And I'm saying I see abundance here. I see provision here. And it has nothing to do with what you have in your hand. It's who hand you hold. Yes. Do you hold this hand? His name is Jesus. Do you hold this hand? Hold on to a hand that doesn't change. Yes. Hold on to a hand that ain't strange. Yes. Hold on to a hand that doesn't make you rearrange who you are. Be who you are in Christ and all that you're called to be. But we're going to have to get on the right pace. We're going to have to plan. We're going to have to get activated. And this is an individual call. This is not a group call because this church is always busy. But are you part of the busyness? Mm. So it's a pace, a plan for it. Plan to be here in your life. Get activated in what's going on. Get consistent and encourage each other in the Lord. Yes. There's no good thing that he withholds from you as you walk upright. And uh, I'm closing. Uh, myself and Pastor Dawkins, we talked just briefly. And the lawyer has, when I was driving from the airport, he said, you know you got to preach. Because you know he just, you know, will just preach, preach, preach. And he's not a pastor that just let anybody, he right, come before the people, which is right. Correct? Because y'all are his flock. And you just can't just put anybody up, right? And, we, you know, we said to each other, the thing that we... Uh, assisted us to grow as leaders was consistency. Out of all that pace, you can make a great plan. People put business plans together all the time, do nothing. People get activated and run around and do busy work and it still didn't accomplish nothing. But if you can be consistent in what you're supposed to do, know that the, the door is open. It's open door season. Big doors, wide doors, windows will open for you if you would just connect with what God is about to do through you. So I love you all, True Worship Christian Fellowship. Um, I love your pastor and your first lady, and I just came here to encourage you to keep going because this is no longer, you're not in the same season. And I, um, I remember when we, we designed the logo, because it was such an intimate thing with me and Pastor Dawkins going back and forth. And I was like, what kind of logo? He said, need trees, whatever. And I sent it to a designer and she designed it. And I want to just leave you with this last thought. Because the logo, sometimes the issue is not your name. Because, you know, they change it. You know, Abram to Abraham. And they change Sarah to Sarah. Sarah to Sarah. But sometimes it's not your, your name. It's just you need to change your logo. So the logo, L means change your life. That's what the L is, change your life. The O is change your outlook. The, uh, the G is to love God. Put God. And that always, it'll change your outcome. So it's usually not who you are and what, you, what family you came from or what your last name is. It's usually you got to change your logo because in Christ you're a new creation. There's an old things that passed away and you're new. So walk in the newness and just run the race at your pace. Amen? Amen. So God bless you all. I love you all. And I'm turning over.